Good morning. Welcome to our monthly webinar series here at Weatherworks. My name is Michael Prianti, Director of Social Marketing and a lead meteorologist. Today we'll be discussing how you can use snowfall data and third party snow verification services to improve your snow contracts and make yourself stand out from the rest in the snow and ice industry. Without further delay, I'll pass it over to Brad. Welcome here to our webinar at Weatherworks and the title of our August 2022 webinar is Bolstering Your Business. And uh, joining me today here in the webinar is Chelsea Ingram. And uh, Chelsea is one of our newest meteorologists here at Weatherworks. And uh, she has been a meteorologist though for several years and she is a dynamic individual. I've had the pleasure of uh, going to SIMA with uh, Chelsea back in June in Milwaukee. We had a great time. And uh, Chelsea, welcome to uh, Weatherworks. I just want to give you the formal introduction, I guess, right now. Brad, thanks so much. It's really, really great to be doing my first webinar with Weatherworks. Very exciting. <laughs> so uh, for those of you that haven't met me, I've worked in broadcast television for over 11 years. Um, I work mainly in partnership solutions with Weatherworks. So I deal a, a lot with sales, but also have an ongoing working relationship with our operations team just to keep everyone connected. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, Chelsea's helped us a lot with our uh, podcast and uh, getting us some um, great guests here in just the last couple of months. And uh, again, that's one of the things I'm uh, in, uh, I'm involved with is uh, the Weather Lounge. I'm one of the co-hosts with Mike Mahalik, and also thanks to our producer uh, Mike Priante, who's also helping us produce this webinar. A little bit of background about myself. Again, I've been with WeatherWorks since 2015, and like Chelsea, I was on television for about 15 years in Charleston, the CBS affiliate WCSC. Uh, in a previous lifetime. So now we're all at Weatherworks and uh, just uh, working towards a better product and of course our better forecast every year here at, uh, here at the, the fine uh, establishment in Hackettstown, <laughs> New Jersey. All right, uh, again, uh, thanks for joining us here at the webinar. We're gonna talk about snowtistics, bear freeze, and a brief revisit to uh, CSTs, which of course is certified snowfall total. So uh, Chelsea, let's get going here and we'll talk about snowfall climatology. And again, this goes hand in hand with statistics, which we uh, are very, uh, you know, we have a lot going on with uh, all the past weather data and it's helpful with all of our clients. That's right. And overall, our plan is to help you create a bigger business portfolio. So it's all about really knowing the location where you're working, whether you're a property manager or whether you're a contractor, either way, this is going to help you build your relationship. If you're a contractor, better working relationship when you really know the climatology of the area where you're working with that uh, property manager and it works exactly the same way around as well. So snowfall climatology is historical snowfall data spanning years, decades, and even sometimes a century. And it can be used to determine averages, extremes, seasonal variability, event magnitude, and so many more things. And I have found just working within our sales department and working with so many clients since April, there is a significant number of contractors and property managers that are really starting to dig into the climatology to help with their bidding process. So while there's a lot of publicly available data that could be obtained through the National Weather Service or even NOAA, coverage is sometimes limited and it's not always quality controlled. So for zip code specific and more accurate data, you'll really need to utilize a private weather service. And here at WeatherWorks, we have one of the most robust winter climatology databases that you can access across the entire nation. So it's extremely important. Uh, ultimately, it's going to help you protect your business from weather extremes and year-to-year -year unpredictability. But more specifically, it'll help you with the following things, structuring your overall contract. And it's also going to help you, if you can go back real quick to that slide, it's yeah. gonna help you with other things like being a resource to determine appropriate caps and floors and thresholds. Sometimes with those seasonal contracts, you've gotta have that cap and that floor and then determining a baseline or a trigger for time and material that you need, as well as identifying those really important trends. Right, and, and, and that's something that goes hand in hand with when uh, you know a lot of our forecasts come out, we do our early snowfall forecasts, our early winter forecasts, and we take all this kind of data 
and kind of put it towards what may happen for the upcoming year. And of course, this helps our clients. And you know, history and the weather sometimes does repeat itself, but we do see trends as meteorologists, and that's kind of what we, you know, put all of our a lot all of our stock into, but a lot of our stock into what we're going to see coming up in the following season. So, uh, like Chelsea was saying, you know, we, we do look at past averages and we do look at what has happened in certain areas across the country, of course, where we cover. Um, one of our main areas, of course, up in New England, and here's Boston's uh, climatology this is an example of what we have uh, with our statistics. And, you know, I'll give you your 30 year, 15 year, all the way down to your three year average of uh, total snowfall. And also it'll give you your seasonal snowfall, uh, you know, it'll break it down each year. So you can see on the right hand side with that graph, you know, you can have as high of a uh, years a couple of years ago when we got crushed with all those uh, new research in 2014 2015 uh, up in boston i think they had uh, like a hundred and something inches of snow and you can see that on the graph then you have your low years though i mean you know down into the mid to 20s around 30 inches of snow back in the late 90s going into 2000 so it all comes out in the wash as an average uh, but again depending on the time period you know the average is varied between 35 and 50 inches per year can you have 100 inches? Sure. Can you have only 20 inches? Sure. So we got to look at those extremes and they, we take them into account. But we, again, it gives you a good idea of what has happened here over the last uh, you know, 30, 40 years. And, and, and that is very important to our clients. So you can see those ups and downs that um, you know, Boston has gone through. Now, this is a little different report here. This is our statistics report from Detroit or for Detroit. And uh, same kind of idea, I'll give you some uh, medians and some extremes. Uh, you know, it'll go through your 10 year uh, average of snowfall. Um, and the amount of times that with the snow events, and again, this is also very impactful to our clients. Is it gonna be an inch of snow or is it gonna be a foot of snow? You know, the amount of work that, you know, folks have to do is of course, based on how much snow is gonna fall, what time of the day, uh, you know, that comes out with the forecast, but when you go through the statistics report, it'll break all this down from the raw data, then right into the median, which will kind of give you an idea of uh, how much snow falls per month. Um, you know, you have a couple of months here where nothing falls, but then you start getting snow, you know, in early November for parts of Detroit here, and that can go all the way through April. So it'll break down, you know, the, 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 the amounts of snow also, and how many times you may see a foot or two of snow. Uh, and again, this is all very helpful as we uh, get ready for the, uh, the, the the winter season and our clients uh, use this uh, of course to uh, get ready for the uh, for the winter that's uh, upcoming yeah so it's all about how much data should you really analyze right because when you look at data you can go over so <laughs> there's a lot, lot there time. yeah there is so not only does season to season snowfall vary so does the average depending on the period of record and we abbreviate that as tor if you see that in our presentation um, but depending on what you're looking to uh, demonstrate to potential client it may dictate which period of record you should be analyzing so as a general rule of thumb this is what we tell everyone a 5 10 or 15 year climatology is recommended with a 10 year being the most common Data becomes more statistically significant while still factoring in shorter term trends when you get that 10 year. Sometimes with the five year, there's just so much variability, right. but it can help you again with your uh, cap or your floor when, with that seasonal uh, contract that you may be trying to bid for. Um, but otherwise, you have uh, at least with 10 years, your variability is going to smooth out just a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and again, there's a lot of noise in this data, too. I mean, we understand there's a lot going on. Uh, and we try to explain that, though, also uh, with, with our reports and, and things like that. So, you know, it, it's 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 not easy. I mean, sometimes you look at that and you're like, wow, there's a lot going on. But there are trends you could find. And that usually is something that, uh, again, that goes towards uh, what everyone's thinking about when they get ready for their uh, upcoming year. Mm -hmm, that's right. So what else can you do with the data, right? Understanding averages and trends, it's a great first step. First step, excuse me, but coming armed with the data when educating your customer can be the finishing touch. And this is what I was talking about earlier. It's all about being able to build that relationship with your client or with your customer because you really know the area uh, of where you're trying to work. So incorporating the wide range of possibilities and what normal uh, is in the contract help balance the winners and losers while minimizing your risk. A basic example, as I've been talking about, is adding those uh, caps and then refunds 
in a seasonal contract, regardless of the amount of snowfall, as a snow and ice business owner, you can can and want to ensure that you can achieve paying fixed costs. So uh, for your shop, your salary, equipment, all of those things, and the variable costs like overtime fuel and labor. Yeah, especially the way the economy has been fluctuating too, Chelsea. You know, this is very, very important stuff uh, as, as we get into our you know, winter of 2022, 23. Uh, it, it's been a tough year for a lot of folks. And, you know, we're, we're still dealing with the effects of COVID. I mean, all this stuff is mm-hmm. kind of like all, uh, you know, it, it's all just runs one big loop for everybody. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something that, that they really want to look at, again, as we, uh, you know, get the contracts ready, or they get their contracts ready for the upcoming winter. So uh, very important stuff. Yeah, and it just helps you kind of account for those lean winters when maybe you don't have that much snow, as well as the extremely heavy winters where you might completely overshoot your average snowfall for a particular area. Um, So as we've seen, snowfall amounts can vary significantly from season to season, but regardless, they often aren't just that average number. And unfortunately, There will be both lean and heavy winters. We notice that as time rolls on and as we look at past history um, mixed in throughout the data. So we'll take a little bit of a deeper dive into um, just understanding event frequency and magnitude. Right. Yeah. I mean, and these numbers, you know, again, these these are averages and and things that we kind of find trends with. I mean, the number of events you can expect in a year, more specifically, the magnitude of those events. So, you know, do you get like 20 one to three inch snowfalls or do you get like two big two foot snowfalls? I mean, the, there's a huge difference between what's going to happen and what you have to do as a business uh, for the snow removal for all that. And, you know, what, what comes with it, staffing and all that kind of stuff. So, for instance, you know, how would you model how would your model fare if, if a seasonal snow is 30 inches from 40 large events or 30 inches from 15 small ones? Like I was just saying, it, it's just or a snow shower threat. You know, these, these are all very impactful things you know you get a half an inch of snow at four in the morning uh along uh, a major thoroughfare uh versus a snow shower on a on a countryside road uh you know at midnight yeah. it's a big difference so uh, the impacts of course are, are something that we uh, we definitely deal with a, a lot with um yeah and and what i have found brad is that clients are able to take sometimes even the raw data some of our really big clients and they can plug it into a financial model to help uh financially project you know what their business is going to look like so it can go so much more beyond just thinking about the weather it really can help you bolster your business which is what this entire webinar is about right I think I got a little bit uh, ahead of myself there, but uh, you know now verifreeze is is another uh, topic here we can actually start to really expand on. Uh, we mm-hmm. started it uh, last July, 2021. Well, we didn't start it in July because it's not freezing yet, but we kind of put it into uh, into motion and we kind of used it as uh, more of a beta test this past winter in 2021, 2022. So uh, let's talk about verifreeze, uh, Chelsea, as we get ready for our brand new winter 22-23. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a product that anyone who uses our certified snowfall total service, which Brad is going to speak on in just a few minutes, anyone who uses that can add Verifreeze or you might even already have it added. So this webinar, regardless, will be helpful to help you better understand what Verifreeze is and how it can benefit you and how it can also bolster your business. So Verifreeze uses AI to produce past pavement, and air temperatures. We have a very extensive database of observations, and that, along with high-resolution weather computer models, help to produce these temperatures. And one thing to know is we're talking about pavement temperature, whereas some models out there that you can access are more specific to the air temperature, which sometimes there can be a major discrepancy and a major difference between the air and the pavement. So it's very important that you're utilizing a product and a service that is taking for uh, taking into account the pavement temperature. So it also accounts for geographic differences mm-hmm. like mountains and valleys, as well as coastlines. We take into account elevation, the proximity are, you are to uh, a water body, like I'm close to the Chesapeake Bay, the Delaware Bay, you know, the Atlantic Ocean, or even the Great Lakes. So offers easy to print reports for those records. Right, and uh, like we said, uh, we we released it last year, um, 
Yeah, if you want to go over the sales part of it there, uh, Chelsea, also, you probably know a little bit more about that now. Uh, but, you know, the, these are, uh, again, a little graph there. I can talk about that here in a few minutes. Uh, but if you want to go over the uh, the documentation stuff there and, uh, you know, yeah. how, how you can, uh, per, you know, how you can obtain a, a location also. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, having Verifreeze uh, with your product portfolio with Leatherworks is really going to help you with that relationship. If you're a contractor, your relationship with that property manager and vice versa. Um, so it's going to provide that daily information regarding the occurrence of ice formation due to a refreeze event as well as black ice. Again, it's available for all of our certified snowfall total locations. It's just an additional $5 per location. So it's extremely affordable. And it's going to help to provide documentation for all those non-accumulating service calls. So right. if for some reason snow melts in the parking lot where you're working and there's some runoff from that snow melt and then temperatures drop below freezing overnight or really any period during the day, then you're gonna to have to go out and put salt down for safety purposes. So this right. is going to account for those non-accumulation service calls. Right, and, and I'll tell you, uh, I'll, I'll never forget, um, it was years ago and I was uh, forecasting around the Boston area. And uh, it was one of those, and, and the folks up there know what I'm talking about. It was one of those flash freeze setups where the winds mm -hmm. turned north and they, you, they were just enough of an easterly component to get the warm air off the Atlantic. But as soon as that wind, turns more north and you know it's right over coming down from maine and new hampshire um that's the flash freeze setup sometimes that we watch for and verifreeze would pick that up however i remember this one uh, gentleman called me he's like uh yeah it's 35 degrees right now in my truck but i'm watching my parking lot ice over in front of my face so I like, yeah <laughs> i said yeah i said well that's the pavement temperature and it sometimes that can drop faster than the air temperature and, and and you can see on this graph here, and we're using Hackettstown as an example, you can see, you know, when that pavement temperature does drop. Now, if you notice the air temperature is above the pavement temperature in this say in this case. So again, that's that that's that setup where, you know, maybe the air temperature is 33, 34. That's not freezing yet, right? But you know, maybe the pavement's already starting to get that glaze on it. Maybe there's a snowpack around that uh, parking lot that you're watching ice over in front of you. So uh, this is what Chelsea was talking about when, you know, we get that, uh, the, the time frame, and uh, this is very helpful for a lot of folks and they can get that printout. Well, you know, they're saying around seven o'clock or so is when that pavement temperature will drop below freezing. And maybe that's, I gotta get some salt out there before then. Yeah, and Brad, you know, there's even situations in the winter, right? Where it just <laughs> rains during yeah. let's say the evening hours okay then the sun sets temperatures crash at night and you get that glaze once again it's it's a flash freeze but with rain so sure. it can happen for so many reasons and that way if your property manager says hey why are you billing me for putting this salt out it didn't even snow well right. here's your documentation on uh, how the pavement temperatures actually drop below freezing yeah, and here's another more of a breakdown for that verifies. I mean, you may not be able to read it completely on the screen, uh, maybe a little bit small, but it's kind of the same thing Chelsea and I have been talking about. You know, it, it's, it's above freezing, well above freezing. You know, you got 60 degrees during the day. Uh, and then maybe you get an event that comes in during the nighttime hours. Uh, it's raining, and it's, as Chelsea was saying, it, it, it doesn't change the snow or anything, but it gets just below freezing enough towards morning where you still have – where the, 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 the pavements and surfaces don't have a chance to dry before that temperature drops below freezing or the pavement gets down below freezing where you can get that ice to form. So in this case right here, and this was March uh, 9th, 2021, just uh, uh, you know, uh, a little more than a year ago, um, it looks like in this case, it was warm during the day and then we probably got some rain seven, eight o'clock at night, well above freezing. But like we said, the skies maybe cleared quickly, temperatures quickly mm -hmm. fell. And by that point it was already dark. So enough wasn't able to dry in time and you get that black ice to form three, four, five o'clock in the morning during the crucial hours when of course, you know, businesses yeah. need to get out and start getting going. Commuters start getting out there as well. Yeah, and in this particular case too, uh, if you look at the pink shaded area, that just shows a significant amount of snow cover melt that occurred. Right. So if you've been plowing a location for you know, a couple of months and you've been piling that snow sure. up against, you know, of course, away from the drains, but against sideways and around the perimeter of a lot, 
and you get a lot of snow melt, this is going to be a problem, and that's why you have to go out and do that service call. Right. Yeah, I guess I should have said this is more of a snow melt uh, case, but same thing would have occurred if yes, you do get the precipitation and and, uh, and you know something that we always kind of watch out for as we get into uh, really late fall and then early into uh, early into um, you know winter as well so uh the sneaky black ice is sneaky we know that and it, yeah. it could be just as devastating as a four inch snowfall uh if it's if, if it's the timing is right and and we've seen that several times uh you know all up and down the i-95 corridor i don't care if you live in boston or washington dc even out in chicago in those areas it happens and it's just the timing yep. is, a, is the main is the crucial factor with all that and since we're talking about it, we might as well just mention our forensic uh, team that we have at WeatherWorks. So if you ever do deal with a slip and fall situation and your property manager happens in your parking lot, feel free to give us a call because we can help you uh, re reconstruct data, reconstruct a forecast for particular days and uh, give you more information if you need some legal help. Yeah. Yeah, our, our uh, uh, I should say the forensics department is incredible with what they do. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, it's uh, Tommy Els and uh, uh, Sherilyn. Uh, they're they're uh, incredible. Amazing. Yeah, for mm -hmm. what what they do with all that. But um, all right, well, again, if you need more information on Verifreeze, of course, you can contact uh, WeatherWorks, WeatherWorksInc.com. Uh, you can email Chelsea. Uh, we'll have all the information at the end of the webinar here. But uh, again, uh, something that we're really looking forward to uh, using for this year. Uh, again, we've used it before, but I think this is going to be the uh, the first, uh, the big year going into uh, our rare freeze. Definitely. So, uh, you know, and of course, you know, hand in hand with snowtistics and rare freeze, Chelsea is always certified snow totals. And yeah. uh, this is something that we uh, we pride ourselves in also. At Weatherworks, we have, uh, I don't even <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know this, but I think we're over 10,000 locations at this point across the country. Yeah. And we're definitely, I can say for sure, the national standard when it comes to snow and ice verification really across the entire nation almost. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's something that I think every meteorologist, and, and they are personally done, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, they're quality controlled. It, it, it's There's no, you know, every every certified snowfall total report that comes from WeatherWorks has been quality controlled by a meteorologist. And usually it's the meteorologist that covers that same area all season long. For example, I, I've been doing New Hampshire and Vermont for the last four to five years. So I, I know the area, I learned the area. I don't live there, but I've learned how to really get an, a good feel for what happens up there, whether it's a snow shower that comes through at two in the morning across the, uh, uh, the White Mountains, or it's a you know a, a, a devastating two foot blizzard that hits uh, you know coastal New Hampshire, um, and you know where that coastal front sometimes sets up. So again, er, uh, every meteorologist that does the CST report, um, you know, has a good handle I think on the area for one, and they're all very well trained for uh, you know for uh, all their all their uh, totals that they come up with. Um, so we have our meteorologists train very hard mm -hmm. to follow a very specific process when it comes to producing our certified snowfall totals. And you might hear us refer to them as CSTs. It's just a lot easier to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, certified snowfall totals is a much longer phrase. But here are the steps. And I'd actually prefer, since you do the certified snowfall total verification, Brad, that you go through the steps to explain it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, you know, we, we get we get all of our observations. Um, now, of course, we use public observations that come through, um, you know, uh, National Weather Service. Uh, you get a lot of the uh, social media. Um, it's all public information. Now, the, the hardest thing to do is when you have these totals that come in, you'll see the same city 10 inches here and then the same city 4.5 inches. OK, which is right. I mean, that's where the quality control comes in. Uh, we use hourly observations, um, not only from the weather service, but also from a lot of other, um, you know, uh, places that we can grab any kind of data that comes in. Uh, Doppler radar, we, we actually use past Doppler radar uh, to see where certain bands of snow may set up, where uh, maybe a two to three inch per hour band set up over a 10 mile wide area, and you have a couple of uh, CST sites on either end or right in the middle of it, you know, we find that, okay, and we use webcams. We we go back 24, 
48 hours maybe before and after the storm and we'll try to determine if there was snow melt how much compaction there actually was during the storm um, these are things that are that are looked at during every system that we deal with on the CSTs mm -hmm. and every uh, site actually uh, for that matter um, we talk to road departments uh, we, we try to find as much as we can on social media where we can hopefully at least or at least find out that it's not, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff on the social media. There's a lot of stuff on the internet that's not yeah. true. So we got to try to also determine, well, is this person, you know, just trying to, to win the most snow because of their area? Because it seems like that's something that happens a lot with snowstorm. Well, I got 22 inches of snow here. Well, I got 22.5, you win. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, that's exactly. the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. And it can be so important to get this type of information, both if you're a property manager and if you're a contractor, because let's uh, talk about a property manager, for instance, sure. okay? Contractors out there, maybe there's a really big snow drift and he's like, no, 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 I, I plowed, you know, uh, eight inches of snow and maybe he's a per inch kind of contract that he has with this property manager, but really it was snow drift. So we're able to be that mode of reconciliation between the property manager right. as well as the contractor. We're that third party, we're the neutral party. We bring in just the scientific information and that helps significantly with right. reconciliation and with your relationship. I was just gonna say, we're, we're not on anybody's side. We're, we are, because we have clients on both sides. We're not just saying, mm -hmm. okay, well, the snow remover, yeah, we're gonna give you an extra couple inches of snow or the snow property manager, you know, well, you know we'll, we'll shave a couple inches off. That's not how it works. It's like, yeah. you, this is what we, this is what we determined. And um, here's your information, here's your information. Okay, let's move on. So exactly. Yeah. Great. But uh, it's it's yeah, and, and again, it's something that you know we we do take pride in. It's something that we deal with uh, basically almost all year round because Alaska does snow. N Northern Alaska, Barrow, or I guess it's not called Barrow anymore, but they do uh, even get snow in June, July, and August. So, uh, but at least we get yeah. a break in the summer. <laughs> and and I'll tap into a little bit more, Brad. Just some of the observations that we do use. You yeah. mentioned observations from the National Weather Service. But we use their storm spotter information too. There's plenty of cooperative observing groups that we use. There's one called Coca Ross. There, there's so yeah. many different types of observations that we use that are in a way um, certified, but certainly valid for this type of um, research that we do in reconstructing the amount of snow that fell. And uh, again, then we get to the quality control part, like I mentioned, and uh, it's just, you know, we, we again we have to look at making sure that the measurements were taken at the right times because sometimes you may see a measurement that was taken at 8 p.m. and then another measurement was taken at 8 a.m. which one was right and like Chelsea was saying sometimes there's wind was the drift was this a drift that was measured or was this area got blown the, the snow got blown all out of it and it's showing a, a, a low spot uh, again it was it a credible source now all this stuff is taken into consideration for each and every um, you know site that we have every zip code that we deal with and uh we don't just broad brush a bunch of numbers out there i mean you know i look at everything i can get my hands on and then just determine the, the best uh you know measurement i can think that of how much snow or and we do with ice too i mean same thing with ice you know coatings to a tenth of an inch to you know two tenths of an inch of ice and and of course ice we know is is you know could be more devastating than snow if not definitely yeah. more devastating and sometimes, Brad, you know, when I'm talking to, to clients or prospective clients, they say, oh, I just, you know, I can just grab my, my snowfall amounts from the National Weather Service. And one thing that they don't realize is there's actually, there's a really large city where the National Weather Service actually gets their snowfall information across the river in another state. So sometimes it's not necessarily, it's in close proximity, but when you're talking about a body of water that's involved and then possibly a slight difference in elevation as well, it's just so much better to utilize a service like our certified snowfall totals because you're going to get that more accurate information and that quality right. control. Yeah. And, and again, we, we use larger, zip, you know, if we do have a larger zip code, you know, we try to get an average for that. I mean, sometimes it's, it's hard to, it, they're not all just spots uh, of, of where these locations are. Sometimes it is just a, a big zip code and we try to just get an average of snow for that that entire area. And again, usually we're within a tenth or two of, uh, of what actually fell. 
Um, you know, we take into account the topography. And like I said earlier, you get to know your state or you know your area that you're doing that CST for. And uh, you get a good feel for it. You know, again, here's another example. You know, the western side of Vermont, you could probably, uh, you, you were in Vermont for a long time. I and that was, upslope. Yeah. Yeah, how about after after like a nor'easter leaves? Okay, yeah, you got your maybe six to 12 inches of snow, but then that upslope kicks in and you get yeah. that west wind and then that whole middle of Vermont just snows for two more days almost, it seems like. Oh my gosh, it never ends. Oh, that's what it felt like sometimes, absolutely. Um, and you know, when we do our certified snowfall totals, we notify our clients with you know the data within I'd say 24 to 48 hours, sometimes it's sooner. Um, but one thing that makes weather work different, and, and you know this so well, Brad, we have over 35 meteorologists on staff doing this operational work. So, um, you know, you have an entire team behind you, and then that team is divided into sections that really cover these different regions and really know your topography. We just have a big enough um, service a big enough team to be able to give you that very, very detailed information, insight and uh, documentation for your business. And, and I'll tell you, there, there's a lot of times too when I'll uh, go ask other meteorologists or somebody that maybe was in that area before and I'll get yeah. there, just, just an idea. You know, I'll, I'll look at it like, can you look at this for a second? Cause I'm kind of getting hazy yeah. here. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, am I missing something or am I not missing something? And, and I think to get that secondary look maybe from somebody else. Yeah, so you're not just getting information from one meteorologist. You're literally getting it from an entire team of people that's working to give you the best forecast and the best verification possible. Yep. All right, Chelsea, let's uh, let's talk about our CSTs and why we're different. What, what's your perspective on that? I mean, what, what makes us number one? Yeah, so while I mentioned, Brad, there are a lot of free sources out there, but they do lack the quality control that we're able to provide at WeatherWorks. So I mentioned there is a particular um, area for the National Weather Service that snowfalls measured. You might think it's in a city, but it's actually across the river in an entirely different state. So we're able to provide that quality control for that zip code. It's zip code resolution information and verification that you can't necessarily get with those free sources. Our software helps to gather data, but a meteorologist physically analyzes every single piece of information. So one thing that is very lacking in a lot of meteorological technology is that human intervention. So we right. provide that piece, not just within our forecasting, but also within our snow and ice verification. So our client retention rate with certified snowfall totals is around 93%. When it comes to our storm alert forecasting product, we're at 98%. So we're just so happy on, you know, the side prior to the storm being that high with our client retention rate. And then on the other side, verification post storm also having a really high retention rate. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's incredible, you know, that retention rate. Uh, and then again, that's what we take pride in uh, at WeatherWorks, whether it's a forensics product, like I said earlier, forensics, CST, forecasting. Um, so again, let's go back, you know, 48 hours, we mentioned earlier that that's the time we'll get them out by at the least or at least at the most, right? Uh, but we do get them out yeah. sometimes within 24 hours. It just depends upon the storm. You know, a couple snow showers mm -hmm. go through an area, usually get it out within 24 no hours. No problem. So, but, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's a huge storms, more Easter though. Yeah. Right. It might take a little the, bit longer. That's but. where the quality control comes in. And, you know, the, the observations. And don't forget, the observations on a big storm, too, Chelsea, aren't sometimes fully in for 24 hours. So, sometimes it takes time. Yep. Right. So we can write our narratives a lot of times, and then we still have to wait for all the observations to come in so we can QC all that and, uh, you know, take that all in. But, again, I, 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 think, uh, I think this has been great. I don't know if you want to add anything here about uh, anything, verification, or I should say, uh, uh, Vera freeze or statistics or um, certified snowfall totals, but uh, you're welcome to, to add in one last thing there, Chelsea. How about this? We're here for you. <laughs> we are here um, for you. Yes. But in in all honesty, you know this this webinar is about bolstering your business, and sure. I think even more so, the ingredient to being able to do that is to develop really strong relationships with clients, with customers and especially that property manager to contractor relationship, when you're able to have a third party provide you with 
ethnotistics that really helps you know the area where you're going to be working, uh, provides you with the certified snowfall totals, the snow and ice verification post storm, and then the verifreeze, you're just really able to maintain a, a healthy working relationship and deal with any type of reconciliation that, that might need to be dealt with when it comes to sure. billing. And it just makes things run so much smoother, more efficiently, more effectively. And you have that documentation for why you had to go out on those service calls. It's very yep. helpful for bolstering your business. And that's what this entire webinar has been about. Yep, and uh, we plan on having uh, a few more here as we head into uh, winter 2022-23. Uh, if you have any questions on anything, any of our products, you can always go to our website, weatherworksync.com. Um, everything is on there. I mean, everything you possibly need. We have blogs, we have uh, samples of our alert service, uh, CSTs and forensics. Um, uh, you can also uh, follow us on all the social media platforms. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Twitter, of course, and also Instagram, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Check that out. Uh, and if you really want to, send me an email, Brad Miller at weatherworksync.com. Send Chelsea, Chelsea Ingram at weatherworksync.com. But uh, again, if uh, that's it for today, I think for our webinar, and uh, you know, check us out uh, by all means, and uh, we will definitely see you back here for. Our next webinar i think will be in september or early october so look for us there we'll let you know of course and uh that's it for now 